So, um, I'm about to speak in this Zoom meeting and I'm gonna record it just so you guys can get an idea of what my story is and uh, what it's like to hear me share in an AA meeting for 15 to 20 minutes. So, um, thanks a lot for watching and this is pretty exciting because I'm allowed to film in my own house. Um, you know, but you're not really allowed to film meetings, so let's see. We have claimed spiritual progress rather than spiritual progress. Hey, we don't give a fuck. No one cares. Yeah. Uh, show no one who fucking cares. No one gives a fuck if they are you. Before and after, make clear three times. Please, show me your tip. Alcoholic, you could not manage your own. This stupid fucking chunk. Probably the human power could have relieved our alcoholism. And see, I put a word to your heart. Oh, hell again. Is this pedophiles anonymous? Patrick, Patrick, I'm gonna sexually assault you. Hang on, guys, one second while we. Shut up. Crazy so people are like hacking into the meeting. Like he got fucking beat down. The dude with the orange hair looks like he got fucking. Yo, what's man, going on? Are? AKA purple guy, AKA William Afton in this call. <laughs> I will now hand over the meeting to your leader for tonight. We will call his wife for about 15 to tw uh, 15 minutes, followed by participation. Um, tonight, I have been told our speaker is Pat or Patrick. Hey, yeah. Oh, wait, one second. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Pat. I'm an alcoholic. Um, wow, that was wild. Woohoo! Um, welcome to the wonderful world of the internet where you take the good with the bad, right? Wow. It's funny. I was just thinking how, like, incredible it is that I can, um, you know, let my friends know that I'm going to be sharing in this meeting and, um, you know, be able to use the internet as a source of, uh, as a way to transmit what I've been given. Um, wow, that was kind of crazy. Um, I hope that uh, that doesn't happen again. Maybe I just need to rush through this before someone hacks in there again. But yeah, so I, you know what it is though? Like I don't, I don't have control over anything. And uh, if that happens again, it's supposed to happen again. <laughs> Right, Michaela. <laughs> my my uh, old sponsor, or my I guess you could call him maybe my second sponsor. Michaela is here, and um, he he something that he's recently said has been resonating um, a lot lately with me, which is that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And you know, we're all like in this weird situation where we're being quarantined, and like, you know, I've been going through like a lot of different roller coasters in my mind like you know am I doing enough am I doing too little am I watching too much Netflix am I working out enough am I eating healthy enough am I uh, playing too many video games and I just like it, it, he, he was talking about how whatever you're doing whatever I'm doing it's perfect it's exactly the way it's supposed to be it's exactly the way everything's perfect you know in god's world everything's perfect and that's like you know i can think that like halfway and it doesn't really do 
like I have to really believe that a hundred percent. Like it says half measures avail us nothing. So if I'm thinking, oh yeah, you know, so I have to do everything completely. I have to give, I have to let go of my will and my life completely and give it up to a higher power and have no expectations and be a complete defeat, which means that this might sound weird, but like my mind is pretty much useless um, without a power. Left to my own devices, I'm just going to complicate everything and just get down on myself and just like beat myself up and uh, and spiral into this like this 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 alcoholic mindset, which is just a bad place for me to be. And even if I, it's like a daily reprieve. So if I have it today, which I definitely do, and I want to thank Ray for asking me to speak, and um, I want to congrat congratulate Elliot for like, you know, he's one of my buddies, and he's like, you know, he's coming back into the room, and he's like saying, "Here I am, I'm a newcomer." Also, I want to congratulate Aaron for like having this the courage to like stand up and be like, yo, here I am. I'm a newcomer again. That's my boy. We grew up together. Same with Elliot and Chris and some of the people in this meeting right now. And I just, uh, I want, I just want to thank you, Ray, again, for asking me to speak. Ray, Ray kind of has been watching me online and he's like, yo, I want to come have you speak at this meeting. And, um, it's just such a beautiful gift that we're able to do this. I mean, I know there's some people here that are, aren't in LA, you know, they're in different states and it's just, uh, it's just such a wild, um, cool thing that, you know, while things might seem to be kind of fucked up right now, I think on the other hand, there's a lot of really cool silver linings that we can take from this whole situation. And I think that when I'm with a power and I'm practicing recovery and I'm like, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm able to see everything with a silver lining. I'm able to be grateful for every single thing that happens to me in my life, whether it's seemingly bad or, um, so, um, I like to share about like steps one, two, and three and, um, alcoholism, ego, and self. It's kind of like a primetime format. I, I, I always think it's pretty cool to, um, but I think I'll also talk a little bit about like just my life um, leading up to primetime because I don't think this is like a primetime meeting. But um, so um, when I was young, I had like a lot of different like things happen to me. Like uh, I was in like a leg a body cast uh, and I, you know, my parents got divorced. It was a really, really bad divorce. I had like um, uh, appendicitis, like my appendix burst inside of me and I had like crazy like poison oak and I just I had like kind of a crazy breaking bones all the time. Just like I kind of a before I started using and I'm not saying this is why I became an alcoholic or not or anything, but it definitely made me almost want to be different or just embrace the idea of being different. And um, that actually can work against me once I get sober because um, the key for me is to find the similarities between all of us and not, you know, I'm not terminally unique when it comes to alcoholism. We're all alcoholics and we all suffer from the same thought life and the same problem. Um, and then once I started drinking or using, I became obsessed with music and I, I got, I, I got into this band. And, and so I, I, I sort of, uh, for lack of a better word, switched addictions from like alcohol and drugs to like success in the music industry. And I got a bunch of that or, you know, a, a moderate amount of that and, uh, you know, started chasing this moving target, you know, because, because my mind is unsatisfied no matter what I get. So, you know, whether I'm taking pills or drinking or smoking, like it's never really enough. And the same thing goes for like when I start achieving success in the real world, it's never enough. And, and, and um, it does work for, for a temporary amount of time though. And it, and it worked for me pretty well. There's a lot of validation and I, it seemed like I was achieving some of my dreams, but once I started losing that, I, I started getting into this real bad depression and that's around the time I found prime time and realized that like, it's not up to me and nothing on the outside is ever going to fix what's, what's going on inside. And anytime I'm doing that, you know, whether it's with an energy drink or a vape, which I have a vape in the other room. Um, oh, we grabbed my vape. 
it's just crazy. You know, I'm always looking for something else to fix what's going on inside, you know, and the only thing that can really, really do that, like on a, on a, on a, on like a real level is God. So finding that power and finding what God means to me has been the I'm most challenging thing. Okay. He said, he's not my slave. I think everyone's my slave, you know? I'm a king baby. I want everyone to do everything for me and it's everyone's fault that I'm not getting what I want and blah, 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 blah. That's why I love my wife because sometimes she's just like, shut up already, you know? But I just need to remember like, my mind is always gonna find new ways to get me, to try to get me loaded really or make me unhappy. So I just gotta kinda just turn that off and, um, and just remember that like, it's all good. Um, and I got to do this because when I'm helping others and I'm reading the literature and I'm not thinking about myself, I feel that's when I feel the best. So once I found prime time after having lost some success in the music industry, I'm, I'm here to say like I have experienced some pretty cool things in sobriety and they didn't make me any happier. I think that's kind of important to say, even though you're gonna try it anyway, because it doesn't matter if you tell me that, I'm still gonna go out and try to do it, you know? Right now I'm chasing a, a different thing, you know? And I'm always gonna be chasing something, but it's like no, becoming aware of the fact that that's what I do. That's what helps me. And just, and just so you know, by the way, this is all just like, I don't really know shit. I really don't. Like I'm learning so much every day and I, this is just like my opinion. I, I, I'm not any kind of an authority or, I, I, I do have 15 years of sobriety and um, that means a lot to me, but I can be just as fucked up as the next guy tomorrow or today. So I'm also here to say that it doesn't matter how much time you have you, you, your, your, your spiritual condition and your happiness d depends on a daily, daily maintenance, daily treatment of this disease. And, and the treatment looks like this, like what we're doing right now. We're in a room and, 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 we're, and we're doing the deal. This is the work, you know, and working with others. I, I can already hear my Michaela saying, no, you gotta work with others. You gotta take people through the book, you know? I got the book right there. And we gotta, we gotta read the book, you know, cause it's right there in the black and white print. That's the good stuff. That's like really what it is. This stuff's great too. Um, and um, I, I, I'm, I'm, being, uh, I'm being inspired and um, people have been messaging me that, that I've been inspiring and that's really a, a pretty incredible, amazing thing. So step one is I'm, 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 I'm powerless. And just, just let me know, Ray or whoever, if you guys wanna just tell me like, a minute or two minutes or five minutes or whatever. Um, but so step one is like, I'm powerless over drugs and alcohol, but my life is also unmanageable. So my life today with 15 years of sobriety can be unmanageable if I'm not doing this stuff. And if I'm not connected to a power and if I'm not like my life is unmanageable left, but like if I'm trying to run it, it is. And I need to know that once I know that it kind of makes everything a lot easier. And that's where step two comes in. I just need to have an open mind and I need to be looking for a power. I need to be rightly relating myself to something every day. And for me, it's like love, inspiration and positivity. And, and whenever I'm in fear, like I'm not with that power. And anytime I'm in a situation where I'm like afraid, I'm just like, you know, where can I bring love? Help God, can you help me bring love into this situation? And then before you know it, I'm like calling the person or I'm texting the person, I'm apologizing. I'm just trying to be like, a loving person contributing to the overall harmony in the world, you know? And then everything just gets better, like right away. And then three is like, I just need to give it all up to that power because I can't do anything. My mind's always trying to like take me out of the moment, you know? It's always trying to put me into fear like of the future or like regret of the past. And everything's cool right now, you know? Everything's great right now. I got my boy Chris is in here. What's up, dog? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And we got um, um, Sasha in here. Um, I, I recognize Rama. I don't know. 
But yeah, this is just so cool, man. Like we're all trudging this road together. And um, I would encourage everyone to get as much, as many numbers as possible. Like if I can't get a hold of my sponsor, like I'll call Chris, I'll call Michaelis, I'll call Sasha, I'll call, you know, I, I need to start calling Aaron more. Like, what's up, bro? Like, you need to call me more, bro. Like, we all like we all need to like call each other. Cause like it's just talking to another alcoholic that like sometimes I just need to like talk about whatever it is I'm going through. Because like I when when, when I had a year, I was going through stuff. When I had five years, I was going through stuff. Now I got 15 years and I'm still going through stuff. You know, right now there's a lot of like financial questions and, and fears that are like popping up in my life like in a big way like credit card debt and like people not paying me what I'm owed and like everyone's kind of at a standstill and it's a really crazy time like I don't think I I mean for sure the world has never seen I mean since we've been alive we've never seen anything like this like the magnitude of it's almost like I'm in some crazy dream it's like every every time I wake up it's like what the f fuck is going on like I'm still like I haven't worn underwear in like fucking a month I'm just like in my house wearing like it's just crazy it's kind of amazing though too like I actually it's another thing Michaela said when he was speaking on uh, FaceTime he's just like you know this is like amazing because it's kind of like the way I've been trying to live for since I've been sober like in the moment like without like all the distractions of the world. It's giving me an opportunity to be more present than I've ever been with like my wife and my dog and like just like being loving and, and spend time with like the people that really matter and like, you know, calling, doing more step work and I don't know, just like eating better and um, yeah, eating is really what's up right now for me. That's like the big thing. Like just what, it, I mean, what could be more important than, than what we put in our body? You know, it seems like so obvious, you know, it's like you're literally putting, I mean, the most important thing is my sobriety and doing step work and helping others and, and, and connecting with this God. But when I'm connected to God, like I see the truth, like the truth is that I should probably be eating more greens and more vegetables. I probably shouldn't be drinking this energy drink. I probably should be taking care of myself, you know, and I probably should be always being honest and I should, I should, you know, really try to live by these principles of humility and honesty and courage and faith and, and open-mindedness and, and, um, selflessness. And, um, so God is just, it's, it's really the trickiest thing. And it's like the most important thing because I was very anti-religion, upside down cross, Danzig, fuck you, punk rock, like religion divides and causes wars. And like, God, for me, like, it's not about religion. It's about like love and this higher power. And it doesn't matter if like certain religions have given God a bad name or like, I can have my own experience with my own power which is just this like overwhelmingly positive, loving energy that, that consumes me at times and gives me this incredible amount of courage. Like I have so much courage. Like I just, I can just be myself and I can just be so honest with people I don't even know because it's like, who gives a shit? Like I have God in my life. It reminds me of that Adam Sandler movie, Punch Drunk Love. I don't know if you've seen it where he calls the guy and he's like, I have so much love in my heart. And he like runs over to like uh, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. And he's just like, he's, he's like this nerdy guy who stands up to this like tough, like gangster guy because he just has so much love in his heart. And it's like, that's like real strength for me is like kindness and love and that's really what it means to be a man, you know, to be vulnerable and loving and compassionate. And uh, it's crazy because sometimes I feel like our society has it backwards, you know. Um, I just, I really feel like I've gone over 15 minutes. I don't, <laughs> what up, Gus? Um, I'll, 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 I mean, I'm like five minutes, okay? Okay, cool. I mean, shit, I'll go all night. Like, I'm, I'm good. I just, just need to just get that vape. It's over there on the other side of the room. No, I'm just joking. I don't, I really don't need to get that vape, but it's like right there by the, um, by the, um, the, uh, like speaker or whatever. 
So, yeah, so step, uh, steps one, two, and three are big, but like before I even go into the steps, before I even try to do anything, in this program, I really need to understand that like my perception is just like off. Bingo, special delivery. Um, I need to know my perception is off. Like I don't, like I just don't really see things quite right. So when I'm reading the book, it's like I really need to do it with someone else because I, I, uh, I'm just like, ju I judge stuff. And, and that's another thing I love about prime time is that they help me see what alcoholism really means. Like what is alcoholism? It's, oh shit. What happened there? I think, uh, I don't know. It looks like I got muted, but, um, I'm not muted. Am I? No, you should be good. Um, Alcoholism is a disease that centers in my mind. And it, 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 it means, it doesn't mean that I like consume, you know, it, it's not necessarily, it has more to do with like how I think and how I am than, than, than it has to do with like what I use or how I use. So it's like, I'm just gonna be unsatisfied and I'm gonna be like selfish and self-centered. Um, and, and that's, the root of all my problems is my selfishness and self-centeredness, which is why it is so cool because it helps me like get out of my own, my get out of my thinking because I'll just think myself into the gutter. What am I get not getting? What do I need? And understanding that like the disease is centering in my mind and being aware of these 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 characteristics that I have. I think everyone has these kinds of character. You know, everyone can be selfish and everyone can. You know, that's one thing, because I talk a lot with like normies about this stuff. And I think the difference is like, I, it doesn't really matter what everyone else is like, you know, what, what matters is that I take these God-given instincts like way too far. And, and my fear and my insecurity and my selfishness and, and my unsatisfied mind causes me to, 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 to wreck my life. It causes me to hurt others and um, I just need to be aware of that. I just need to wake up and be like, okay, like I know that like I have this mind that's gonna be like warped. So like knowing that is something I need to do before I even take step one. And that's kind of what I, what I was getting to. It's like the step you kind of need to do before, which to be honest is the second part of step one. My, my life is unmanageable, but it also means for me that my thought life is unmanageable. I don't think right. You know, I think my thinking is off. I've warped my mind. Whether it was warped before I started drinking or not is kind of irrelevant. Um, it's warped and I don't really think right. So um, humility is really important. And I just want to make sure that I'm not coming off like I know everything. I just get excited to talk about this stuff because I love it so much because it saved my life and it made me who I am today. But I really do want to embody humility and I always want to be learning from new people. I don't care how much time you have, there's something that I can learn from you. So um, it's funny, I was just gonna say, uh, come up to me after the meeting and get my number, but I guess I'm gonna hang out though. I don't know if we hang out or whatever after the meeting, but uh, thanks again, Ray and Annalise. I think it is. I just, this is, this has been really cool guys. I'm going to kind of like, let it, she'll let God have it now. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Patrick. I yeah. uh, really appreciate your share.